beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Hallelujah. For there is an operation of the Spirit in the body of Christ. Revelation 5. Listen to me. If at this point in your life, you have not expressed dissatisfaction for religion and church then there is a need to do an extra work in your life to catch up hallelujah because the bible says the 20 and 4 elders listen to me that when they worshiped they said holy 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 is the lord god who was who is and who is to come these are dimensions of his operations that were revealed to the people hallelujah and so we see a dimension of god who was it's not a waste but it's to tell you that god is progressive so he will not end in the dimension who was and then they see who is hallelujah that which the spirit is doing at the moment and then by prophetic insight we have a revelation of that dimension that is to come and so it's important that as we stand and begin to relate with the things of the spirit in this day and age that we are able to understand the emphasis of the spirit for every time the bible says for the sons of Issachar, they had a comprehension of the times hallelujah and the bible says among the organization of god's creation he made stars and part of the ministry of some of those stars is to be able to signify to the inhabitants of the earth when seasons change to the end that we can align with the operation of the spirit for even the past glory of god contains a measure of glory the past revelation but that it is not sufficient to take us to the next dimensions that the nations would require and so it's important and it becomes a responsibility upon us as citizens of the kingdom to walk in peace with the holy ghost so that we are able to understand his operation for it is an error to assume that god is doing the same thing at every season hallelujah in the revelation i shared with us a few weeks ago hallelujah that there was a feast and there were rulers there those who were honored jesus was in their midst but they did not recognize him the wedding in cana the first miracle of jesus a prophetic message to what the holy ghost is going to be doing and the bible says the old wine finished but the festivity was still on 
the rulers did not know because they had been used to deceiving the people and they had lost touch with the source of the wine are you following me now and the bible says the festivity was still on and there was a constraint happening but the people could not understand because there was no insight and the bible says only the servants followed mary the mother of jesus and they said jesus there is trouble the revelation of john which is sent to his servants oh this is the mystery that in this generation only servants will ride on horses the princes will receive an embarrassment because they will walk after hallelujah so the bible says the servants came to jesus they said although there are many crowds we are not confused about who holds authority and we call ourselves servants and we come and he said fill six pots and when they filled it with water hallelujah he said take it to the rulers and when he took it to the rulers they tasted when they thought the dispensation and the feast was over little did they know it was about to begin because a new kind of wine the bible says the rulers did not know where that wine came from only the servants hallelujah and so there is a transition and god is revealing things to his servants said the Lord will not do anything but he will reveal his counsel to his servants praise the Lord then it's our responsibility to begin to search and walk in peace with the spirit so that we can understand the things that the spirit is doing at every given time there are certain revelations that we understand that have been sealed the bible says in revelations 5 that there was a call in heaven and that call was that who is worthy so there are certain revelations that is not given freely it's a contention it's gotten by qualification he said who is worthy to that one he will be able to open the book and unlock the scroll he said no man was worthy to open the book and the elder began to cry John why because in that revelation contains certain mysteries that should be opened up and the Bible makes us to understand that the elder the angel tapped him and said weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David is worthy to open the book hallelujah it's important to be in peace with what the Spirit of God is doing. And this is our desire in this place. The Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of the Lord was cast. He didn't say men stop going to the temple. But he said the word of God was cast. Praise the Lord. So tonight let it be that you didn't just come to do church as usual. Let it be that you came because you understand that receiving from God will position you to understand what he's doing in the spirit. And by alignment, you become a benefactor and you become usable. It's not enough to be available. You must be usable. Hallelujah. And only the Holy Spirit is able to help us into this truth. And so, Lord, we thank you. Because you will bless us tonight. Lord, do not leave us behind. Let us follow up in pace with the things the Spirit is doing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Be seated. Good to have everyone around. Hallelujah. We're subjecting ourselves to the dealings of the spirit again and again every week every week week after week month after month we're subjecting ourselves as students in the school of the spirit allowing him to teach us and to bring us into comprehension of kingdom realities hallelujah because a time will come when the dividends of this sacrifice will appear unto all.
and we want to position ourselves we are not careful to admit that not everybody is open to the things of the spirit especially in this day and age where there are all kinds of christian distractions hallelujah the church of christ has become a place where ethics of religion are taken as usual but the presence of christ and his body ought to be a place of freshness where we can communicate to the world what the spirit of god is doing at every given time mm. hallelujah tonight i want to share something that i believe will be a great journey a great blessing to our journey in the spirit how many of you were blessed last week it was a wonderful time of prayer hallelujah if the things of the spirit are still a burden to you then there is need to retreat in the presence of god hallelujah there are lots of believers who have a problem with the things of god and i hope we do not have those kinds of people here let me tell you something um whenever you come for koinonia make sure that you're not just coming to fulfill a ritual are you listening to me please ensure that you're not just coming to watch other people or to see what are the other things you must come with a predetermination and say lord what do you have for me that can help me in this journey we are in a journey i'm so happy every friday when i have the opportunity to share god's word because i understand that there is at least somebody who is interested in the things of the spirit and if god can find such a man he can produce a wonder out of him praise the lord first peter 2 say after me god is preparing an army say it like you believe it god is preparing an army ask your neighbor are you part of this army tell your neighbor don't tell lies unto him who sits on the throne blessings and honor to Jesus the Lamb who was slain glory and power Forever and ever and ever you reign forever and ever you reign forever and ever you reign forever and ever you reign hallelujah First Peter 2 verse 9. First Peter 2 verse 9. Hmm. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. It never said you are members of living faith, of Christ's embassy, or deeper life, or redeemed. Those are structures. You get my point? But I'm saying beyond the structures, you must look. It says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a people of his own, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the Bible tells us clearly here that we have been called out of darkness and 
given an assignment hallelujah and that assignment is to show forth the praises of him that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light hallelujah and tonight we're going to be examining how far we've gone in this journey and obtain grace to press ahead hallelujah The children of Issachar, the Bible says, had an understanding of the times. And as a result, they knew what to do. They knew how to align themselves with the things that the Spirit was attempting to bring. And not everyone is able to align himself to the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. You know why? Because alignment means that you have to die to yourself. Hallelujah. Alignment means that you are bending to assume a posture that may not be convenient. And so it takes a revelation bigger than yourself and your personal comforts to say, Lord, regardless of how this will affect me, I am prepared to come into alignment with your divine will to the end that your plans and purposes be achieved at every given time. That as you search for men and women that you will use to do exploits, that you can find a vessel in me. The Bible says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of wood or gold and silver, but of wood and of clay. He says, some are unto dishonor and some are unto honor. He says, if a man will purge himself, that man will become a vessel unto honor, fit for the master's use. Say after me once again, God is raising an army. And say, I am part of that army. I am part of that army. Led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. We we'll just establish a few things. And then we'll pray. Two verse one. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh. For it is near at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, like the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people. This is the description of God's army. Please listen. A great people and strong there has not ever been like them before you cannot trace them to any history neither shall any more be after it even to the years of many generations they are characterized by a fire that devoureth before them they are men of fire confirming that which the Bible says he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flame and behind them a flame burneth and the land is like the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness yea nothing shall escape them they are thorough people the appearance of them is like the appearance of horses and like the horsemen so shall they run like the noise of chariots on the mountain tops they shall leap like the noise of the flame of fire that devoured the stubble like a like a strong people set in a battle array before their face the people shall be much pained all faces shall gather blackness the bible says they shall run like mighty men look at this description they shall climb the wall like men of war they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks no competition no dabbling into unnecessary things everyone maintaining focus that's what watch my knee calls the limitation of the body the capacity to allow every member to function within the jurisdiction of their grace the bible says they will not break ranks neither shall one trust another they shall walk everyone in his path and when they fall upon the sword can you imagine they shall not be wounded what an army they shall run to and fro in the city 
they shall run upon the wall and they shall climb upon the houses they shall enter in at the windows like a thief the earth shall quake before them the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark and the star shall withdraw her shining the bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight by day the moon will no more give you light by moon. it says jehovah the christ himself he will be your everlasting light that means they will function from a different source of illumination not that which has been known are you listening to me because he made many lights but at the emergence of the two great lights there was no longer those kinds of lights it's not like they were not truth but they were no longer needed in light of the higher lights hmm. let's finish up the lord shall utter his voice before his army that means the lord himself is a commander for his camp is very great for he is strong who executed his word for the day of the lord is great and very terrible who can abide look up please there is there is a campaign of the spirit the holy ghost is running to and fro across the length and breadth of this nation the nation of africa and across the world searching for men and women who will avail themselves to be used hallelujah every time before a kairos moment in the earth god begins to prepare a people and the first thing he does is to begin to beckon on them so that they willingly offer themselves and say we are available are you listening to me we are available and then he separates those people and begins to subject them to the trainings that will equip them for his agenda now the very difficult thing is this separation is a very difficult thing because it entails you breaking away from status quo breaking away from what has been received as the norm and so your mind will fight it everything around you will fight it and the pressure that standing alone will bring to you will ask you whether it is worth it to stand that's why the bible says haven't done all to stand stand hallelujah and all over the body of christ there has been a sudden awakening pastors apostles preachers evangelists as many who are careful enough to listen to the promptings and the dealings of the spirit they are beginning to blow this alarm in zion and to sound it upon his holy mountain that there are a people that god is preparing is raising is training is building and that the fashion of this training is not one that will be traced to the dealings of god in the past here and there we could take extracts from the dealings of God with Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. But that there is a unique operation of the spirit that is bringing on this caliber of people. That will necessitate staying with the Holy Ghost part time. You will not miss the Holy Ghost and go back to history and expect to catch up. Because the dealings are foreign to the things that he has done before. And so God will entail that these people will subject themselves to the total leadership of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is why coming under the Lordship of the Spirit is only the beginning of the journey, not the end. Coming under the Lordship means that you are bringing yourself under subjection to say, Lord, you are looking for an army and you are training and preparing men and I may not have all that it takes right now, but I have a willing heart. I watched Catherine Kuhlman yesterday and I cried. I wept like a baby when I watched this dear woman of God standing in power, an epitome of yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And while she stood on the stage ministering the word of God, you could see the oneness, the similitude. You could see how, how intertwined, how mingled this woman had been with the Holy Ghost. That 
her utterances were so piercing not because of the volume of her voice but the depth and the realm from which she was fetching these things from a woman and she made an interesting statement she said Catherine Kuman died a long time ago she said I remember the date and the time I died she entered a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He has now become my new life. And my movement is according to the impulse of the spirit. And that is going to be the characteristic of the spiritual man. Speaking to Nicodemus, Jesus said, The wind bloweth where it listeth. You will not be able to predict this generation of people because they have subjected themselves under the total influence of the spirit that's where we get the word baptism it's from the greek word baptizo it means to be totally immersed in a flood such that you do not see the person again you only see the object that immersed him and so we come under the influence of the holy spirit now, a lot of believers have trivialized the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But without the Holy Spirit, there is no hope. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. Listen to me. He is the guarantee that we can become that army to the expectation of God. Because he's the one who guides us and builds us. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This has been our journey all through Koinonia. It is not a move to make a name. It's an attempt to cooperate with the Spirit and partner with Him in bringing a convergence of as many who are interested in becoming part of this move of God. Who will indicate willingness to subject themselves to the dealings of the Spirit over time. We don't tell you lies here. We don't hype you with, with all kinds of nonsense. The word of God comes in truth and power. And I've said it again, it will cost you to align with the spirit. The Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with the activities of civilians. And so when you come, there will be a demand upon you to lay aside your ambition and pick up that of the king. But then as surely as the Lord lives, there will be a reward for that sacrifice. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. So I'm aware that there are different kinds of people and different kinds of soils. And so I want us to start tonight by reminding ourselves that every time we appear before God in Zion, we came for business. Hallelujah. We didn't just come to... Um, enjoy the atmosphere or to while away two or three hours no we came based on the revelation listen i must get you to understand this if you do not you will not be able to benefit maximally are you following me now you must come with a predetermination that i am coming to continue the training it is not an endless training there is a day the sound of the trumpet will blow and at such times you will appreciate the meticulous dealings of the spirit touching issues after issues aspects after aspects flogging out a lot of things pruning different things the bible says narrow is the path that leads to life why because when you are entering that path jesus gave us a similitude of that revelation using the eye of the needle it will it will entail you divorcing yourself with a lot of things and going alone. So the path is narrow. In other words, the things that can pass have been predetermined. You will not come with excess luggages and mindsets. But wide is the way that leads to destruction. And Jesus said, because the rich people have a lot of things, he said they may not be able to pass. Are you following me? And so you come with your ambitions and different things. And then some of us may come just 
to use Jesus Christ as an errand boy as usual because that's the move that has been taught in the body of Christ and so we have a need driven congregation who only come to God as a means to an end and that end is to satisfy their belly and to bring themselves in a position where they are comforted rulers in the feast while the Lord of the harvest is in the congregation he's not honored and he's not esteemed but the Bible tells us in heaven that there will be a supper. And in that supper, the one who should be the head will actually be the head. Are you following me tonight? And so the first challenge that the Holy Ghost places before us tonight is to ask you how serious are you? How much are you convicted? What is your passion about the things of God and about this army that God is mobilizing? What is your concept of Christianity and church and religion? Why do you pursue God? He said, why do you call me Lord? And then I notice that there is only a receiving from you. There is no doing. You call me Lord because you came and understood by knowledge that there is a dimension of me that is able to supply your needs. You call me Lord because you understand that there is a dimension that is able to protect you and give you a wife and give you a husband. But this kind of army are not the ones who are going to tie God to a covenant. They are going to say, Lord, blessing or no blessing. They are the type who were sent to the vineyard without negotiation. They did not negotiate. When he called the people in the morning, they said, we will only work if you will pay us a denary. He said, you mean... If I don't pay you, you won't work. He said, no pay, no work. And he said, all right. You have tied a covenant with me, go. Later, he found some people sitting. And he said, do you love me enough to walk in my vineyard? They said, yes. No arrangement. And they entered the vineyard. At the end of the day, even those who came willingly, but at the 11th hour, got the same reward with those who gave God conditions. And they were angry. And he said, am I not the Lord of the harvest? What did I do that was wrong? That Christianity that gives God conditions before your allegiance must be destroyed is witchcraft coming from the pit of hell. Are you listening to me? Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Men and women who love God with their life, with their soul, with their all. Your passion is not motivated by any loss that you have hidden. Waiting to be manifested. And you say, Lord, I love you and I believe your word. But I am more passionate than any other thing. I'm not just pursuing you. Listen. It's time the church body begins to define what is motivating their pursuit to God. Are you listening to me? Because that is what will determine how far we will continue in this journey. If you are pursuing God for money or fame or husband or wife, that means the day you get married, you have no need to pursue again. Are you listening to me? And so our desire for, for God must come from an eternal plane that nothing in time will be able to quench that hunger. This becomes the platform on which authentic Christianity will spring from. To say, Lord, I love you and I'm committed. Whatever your agenda is, I am interested. I get troubled in my spirit seeing how many believers openly do not care about the agenda of God. The average church in Nigeria is only interested in fulfilling programs and holding conferences and conventions and we name all kinds of things. And we are happy. We are meticulous in planning. The ego of the, the man of God or the organizer is at stake. And every kind of artistry and accuracy comes into it. But the one whose agenda we should pursue is left. And the rulers are contending to be lords in the feast. Are you listening to me? And so spiritual growth is not just an act of knowing scripture is first coming to a point where you realize that you have no life of your own listen to me that's not the end that's the beginning this is the reason why a spiritual man is 
he watched so much in the presence of God because of all of these sacrifices that you have to subject yourself to. Thank you, Jesus. And tonight, what is your motivation? Why are you pursuing God? Why are you running after the things of God? Is it with a passion that will expire when certain things come into your life? or it's a genuine passion you say lord i thank you because you will give me a wife and a husband and a car and all of this but i need you to know that i mean business with you are you just pursuing god because you are a student and then you need him so that you can use him as a ladder towards academic success and the day you cry and you graduate you just wave him and say lord there are many others who didn't backslide like me so you can concentrate on them lovest thou me more than this this was a question that he asked peter because you know listen let me tell you something peter is, a, is an interesting figure when jesus was going to clean the feet of the disciples peter said ah i respect you so much i mean come on how can you clean my feet jesus said you do not even know what i'm doing and peter said now just bath me now i understand and he was the one who ran away and betrayed jesus to the point that he called a little girl woman because he was trying to defend himself. Hallelujah. And when the hidden agenda that was in their heart, see, eventually, over time, the agenda in their heart for pursuing Jesus began to unravel. When the mother of James and John came to meet Jesus on behalf of her two sons, meaning they were already nursing it, that Jesus will conquer Caesar and now become the king of the roman empire and then at that point the disciples will become members of the cabinet so while they were pursuing him they were already setting their campaign strategies on ground and they used their mother and the mother will say you know i'm a woman what will you do to my children because i got disturbed at the speed with which they left fishing and started following jesus they didn't think about it jesus was a celebrity come and they say of course i've always wanted and then later on when they found out that this journey was getting too long they started asking questions first among themselves this is why you see a preacher 10 years diligence in, in god and then after a while he just says lord at least heaven knows i've tried because the motif that was behind the establishment of that ministry is beginning to be revealed hallelujah are you following me tonight the light of god is searching our hearts to help us this is how we grow in the spirit and then at a particular time they wanted to motivate themselves in the absence of jesus because they did not understand what governmental authority is they did not understand that you only receive results when you are sent jesus went with peter james and john and the remaining disciples gathered themselves around and they could not stand the ego and the embarrassment that the crowd around them they said look why wait for jesus can't we take initiatives on our own and they brought somebody who was epileptic and they did not understand the order and the trainings in the spirit and how things are done they began to assume the position so that in the absence of jesus they might receive a temporary glory and console their loss before his arrival and they were disappointed because they saw jesus do it with ease and they thought it would happen that same way here and there in the bible you will see men who pursue jesus christ for different reasons people who wanted to buy anointing so the the the, the issue of buying anointing did not start from our generation when they saw that by the laying on of hands Men were receiving the Holy Ghost. How much? Let me give you. And the church of Christ has turned into a place of gullible men and women of God. Selling what they perceive to be the anointing. And we have a church that will not grow. Because the price for growth is unbearable. And so we rather prefer to, in, to, to mediate and use the prophetic and the apostolic. And whatever can stand to give us a momentary Suko.
So if I need to find out whether it's the will of God for the job or not, I know that if I'm to follow the regular part of the spirit, I may need to wait upon the Lord in praying and fasting for three days. And I say, why waste my time? When there is a donkey called a prophet and an apostle that we can ride gloriously on. And so we have a result-oriented church. Man of God, tell me what will become of my life. And we do not know him. And we are not even interested in the agenda of God. And let me tell you, friends, if God does not raise carpenters to judge the manifestation of these horns that rise up against Judah, I tell you, there will be casualty in our generation. A time will come when the new age will wipe Christianity if we do not stand. And this is why God is creating platforms like this across the nations, the remnant, who will stand and say, no, this is not the pattern of the spirit. Are you listening to me? It cannot be church as usual. The average Christian is taught, know nothing about Jesus. Do you know, I asked somebody one day, I said, who is Jesus? Born again, spirit filled. I said who is Jesus and he was shocked to find out that he did not even know what to tell me about Jesus he just said he's the savior of the world let me ask you who is Jesus no 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 don't give me a, a guesswork or what you got from your Bible who is Jesus do you know him if you don't stop telling lies on stage that he's your friend because the way we talk about him is as though we drank tea with him but then you ask him, who is Jesus? Who is the Holy Ghost? Amazing that the church does not even know the Holy Ghost. Scholars know more about the Holy Ghost than the church. They have researched as critics and come up with facts that the church is not even aware. We are not interested. The message about Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the kingdom and the life of God, the priority and the agenda of the Father that should be the pivot of the operation of every church is absent and we have replaced it with all kinds of activities making money promoting people and you see people trying to be zealous in church and all they are looking for is the name deacon or pastor and that becomes our ultimate satisfaction there needs to be a redefinition of what has been motivating us in our pursuit for God no wonder at every challenge many believers stand and give up but the bible says if your strength fails you in the day of battle that means you did not gather strength hallelujah if i were the pastor of many churches after this service they'll, they'll have a board meeting about me and say we don't like this kind of thing you don't come and spoil our minds read about jesus christ Elijah was called the troublemaker in Israel. And right now you have believers who come into a building and say, why didn't they put AC? I'm sweating and I'm getting inconvenienced. But students can stand to collect scholarship in front of guidance and counseling. In the hot sun, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. You are determined to get it. No matter what happens, you stand on that line. You maintain your position. They want to push you. You say, I'm not going anywhere. They say, you're a lady. You say, I know. I will show you I'm a lady of Jesus. We, 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 so we have that spirit of determination. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, you hold a service after one hour, 30 minutes, everybody's looking at their watch. And it's not like they have what, something to do afterwards. Because immediately after the meeting, you see them greeting one another for hours. So why the hurry? What is motivating us? What drives our pursuit for God? Are we passionate? When Jesus came, he said, listen, this is my meat. In other words, I derive satisfaction in this the will of the father he said i must walk the him the works of him that sent me while it is day he placed urgency on his assignment for the night comment when no man can walk again 
Is there an urgency in your spirit to pursue God? Hallelujah. And then the second group of people in church that we have are those who have pressed onto God to a measure and then got to that measure and based on what we want to call movements, holiness movement, word of faith movement, charismatic movement, the moment you contend to the point that you enter the, the revelations of a movement, you are satisfied. And there is no pressure upon our spirits to contend for greater height. Not realizing that there are certain scrolls that have been closed. That if we will contend, it will be open unto us. And we will open up new revelations about God. And be a blessing to the body. And so I ask you a question tonight under God. Are you really interested in the agenda of the Father? What are you really? Define what motivates you. Heaven. Wife. Money. CGPA. A job. At what point will you rest and say, Kai, I've tried in this Christian journey. You must define it right now. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me. Yeah. I will go. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me. I will go. Can that be the anthem of your life? That when people ask you and say, What is your plan and goal in life? You will first tell them that all that I'm about to tell you is a derivative of what God has committed unto me. I did not cook, sit down and cook up any ambition for myself. Because I am bound by an oath to my Savior that I will stand and live for him. I have brought myself willingly under the government and the sovereign rule of the king. And I will not compromise. Before I continue, we are going to pray for five minutes. And that prayer, listen to me, please. Don't bow your head. We are not bowing heads here. We are going to pray audibly. Hallelujah. And the prayer is going to say, Lord, I lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. You will hear us preach this again and again. I will bow to you, to no other. We are going to repent before we continue in this service. The first repentance is to say, Lord, I'm ashamed to find out that there has been a hidden loss that has been motivating my pursuit for you. But tonight I repent. Are you listening to me? You're going to pray. Because you know I'm not lying. I pray this to God every time. I say, Lord, if there is any other reason aside from my love for you, why I pursue you, judge it, prune it, and bring me to a point where I become a dead man without you. Is that your prayer? We're going to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I lay down idols. I cannot deny that I have needs. But, Lord, I have let these needs to motivate my love for you. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Lord, hidden in me is the ability to want fame. I cannot deny it. And while it is not bad, I have allowed it to motivate my pursuit. Lord, I've been crying for spiritual gifts because I don't want to. I've suffered inferiority complex. And so I'm looking for what will ease it away. And 
and unfortunately I allowed it to slip and become my motivation for you lift your voice and pray pray say Lord I came here with a need but Lord in the light of your word if I will be honest with myself I'm just pursuing you the hunger increased simply because I needed a solution not because I loved you not because I was passionate about your agenda make sure you are praying make sure you are praying make sure you are praying I have made you too small in my eyes we are still praying oh Lord forgive me and I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me but tonight in koinonia but now oh lord i see my wrong heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my heart and with my soul oh lord Come on, magnify him above your needs. Oh Lord, be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly exalted, and there is nothing. for God will tell in your desire for evangelism your passion for God will tell in how much you give to the house of God your desire will tell how much you pray for the house of God your desire will tell in how much you love the word of God how much you love his spirit we are still praying five minutes say Lord search my heart I'm not pretending tonight I cannot lie there are idols in my heart I'm a Christian I'm born again I'm filled with the Holy Ghost but Lord if you do not give me certain things after some time I may begin to reconsider my passion help me tonight I came to Koinonia for my passion to be renewed help me 
I want to grow. Help me. Lord, I'm sorry. I've taken your pursuit and replaced it with many things. Say, Lord, I didn't even know when certain desires overtook a genuine passion. I was so distracted by the burdens upon me that I did not realize that I had missed out on a genuine passion. Genuine passion. Not tied to marriage. Not tied to money. Not tied to fame not tied to ministry, not tied to anointing. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. Christ. Christ in me. Christ above me, Christ before me, Christ by my side, my motivation, the beginning, the end. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen. God is re examining the foundations from which our pursuit for Christ is hinged on because the Bible says if the foundation it says if the foundation be destroyed are you listening to me? we are still praying I have not finished the teaching but I just sense in my spirit to sing one more song it's all about you it's all about you if you don't believe it, don't sing it yet. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. When you get the revelation, you can join. But for as many who mean it, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus. Hey. It's all about you. 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 For the last time now. It's all about you. All about you, Lord. All about you, Jesus. You will realize what. Listen, listen. From this light of God, you will realize why you are not proud of standing for Jesus in the presence of your friends. 
is because you are not yet convinced that's why you cannot share jesus with others you are afraid of the embarrassment you are conscious of your beauty that's an idol you are conscious of it lest it will kill an opportunity to be in a relationship you cannot share christ with your business partner with your lecturer we have replaced him with different things in our hearts so every time satan comes he comes projecting your loss first and foremost so that you cannot resist Lord help us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you are here. Please be seated and let's continue. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that before the day of the Lord, listen to me, the spirit of Elijah Malachi 4 before the spirit before the day of the Lord the spirit of Elijah will be sent forth to prepare the way and so before Jesus came the spirit of Elijah was sent forth and he began to prepare the way how was he preparing the way calling the people to realize how bad they had fallen not because he could redeem them baptism at that time was not a sign of new birth it was an indication that they would be interested in what jesus was coming to offer so as many who were convicted by his teaching prepared their hearts so that when the messiah showed up they would not resist him for john himself did not have any power to save any man but he said i am the voice of one crying in the wilderness he was an echo and right now that same spirit of Elijah has been released upon the body of Christ to expose the works of iniquity and to bring the sons of God into righteousness and this is what is happening across every church and every denomination that truly names the name of Christ is a manifestation of this prophetic spirit that is able to receive of the things of God and communicate it fearlessly This is how your Christianity will last. So that 30 years from now, you will raise your children in the fear of the Lord. They will know no other doctrine and no other gospel. By default, they will, they will be built knowing that they love God and they have a passion for Him and Him alone. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. When the Holy Ghost brings you to this position, the next thing that happens is He begins to subject you through different dealings and trainings. Please listen, this is important. This is the principle, the way God prepares His army. And the way, hallelujah. Now, please look up. One is not a tragedy, but if we don't do anything about it, it will become an old wine hallelujah there was a time in the body of Christ when our pursuit was for Rema praise God please listen to me Rema and the quality of your ministry was proportional to the depth of Rema insight into scripture hallelujah how you could compare scripture with scripture how you could quote whole chapters hallelujah nothing wrong in that we gave awards to people for quoting chapters and chapters of scripture but i needed to know that in the progression of the dealings of god listen the holy ghost begins by exposing you to the knowledge of god are you listening to me he brings you to that point where you begin to know about god through the scripture you begin to browse through scripture and see the character of God and see his life and his nature and his principles. But can I tell you something? 
and this is where a lot of the church body need to upgrade their life and anytime I say this people get offended I don't castigate ministers but I am the voice that must echo the things that I hear in the spirit are you listening to me I don't have a problem with any church in fact there is no channel I don't watch but listen to me let me tell you something when you say I'm born again I'm a new creation in Christ hallelujah that settles it I need you to know listen to me that it's not the fault of those who have brought this revelation and it's not a lie but that is not all there is are you listening to me it's not a lie because scripture cannot be broken however if that is the only perspective that is seen in the body then there is no completion are you following me now and so there was a an error and a dispensation where our fathers contended and pressed in the spirit and they came into that dimension where they began to understand that wow from scripture i'm free from condemnation are you listening to me i'm free but the bible says knowledge shall increase meaning it was not supposed to stop with that discovery are you listening to me that is a sign of a healthy christian that there is progression into the depths of the spirit the bible says we see in part and according to that part we prophesy so when god enlarges that which you see you begin to prophesy but many people have camped around certain revelations and will fight anything that looks above it calling it error are you listening to me There are many people who have been taught in church that there's nothing like demons. Nothing like Satan. The only demon you have is in your mind. But that's not true. Well, for those who grew up under CNN, but for those who my father's mother was a traditionalist. Are you listening to me? So, I'm not trying to guess that Satan exists. It's one thing to believe he exists. It's another thing to believe he has power over you. That is where it's faulty. Are you listening to me? But for you to just kick away and say, forget it, there's no demon anywhere. Ha, be careful. Because many of the people who are speaking will later on find out the reason why they are stunted in their life and will not make advancement. A number of them have discovered it, but their arrogance will not allow them to admit that they have seen a greater light. And so they would rather prefer to come in what they believe to be the final revelation of the dimension of God that is given to man. When you read a lot of Kenneth Hagin's books, there are many things written in that book that you might not totally agree with right now. Is that correct? That was because during Kenneth Hagin's time, the level and the operation of the spirit and the truths that were opened there was what he received and documented. So you cannot criticize him. But at the same time, in as much as we call him a general, we cannot stop at that level. Are you listening to me? So I cannot build a camp around Kenneth Hagin and say all that he taught, the thing that was moving the church was physical manifestation, gold dust, silver dust. Everybody will bring every kind of thing. Your watch, the, the silver on your watch will scratch on your hand and say, see, gold dust. And it was not wrong. Listen to me. But the Holy Ghost was studying the way we were responding to it. The moment it would become an idol, he sees that experience so that we will continue with the next dealings of the Spirit. But where you encamp around gold dust and you find your ministry around gold dust and oil and so on and so forth, then there will be trouble because you will resist those who are progressing in the Spirit and you will try to create many teachings to prove that they are in error not knowing that you are the one who is taunted and even when the holy ghost is ministering to you a time will come the light will be too bright you cannot explain and so you will begin to get angry because the people are not stupid the bible says it will happen to us as it happened in nephtha and zebulun he said the people in nephtha and zebulun there was a prophecy he says those who are in darkness they have seen a great light not a light a great light So it will happen. A great light. One characteristic of a healthy church 
is the ability to transit with the spirit but when the man of God takes the place of God and makes himself the final authority in the church, he is unable to adjust because his ego will not be able to accommodate the explanations he has to give for his transition in the spirit. Transition in the spirit is not, is not a thing of embarrassment. Hallelujah. There are ministers who stop their members from reading some books because of insecurity. They want to keep the members around what they believe is the full and universal counsel of God. And I hear a lot of ministers teach with such arrogance and they do not know that there are other dimensions that are being opened up. There are many who did not stop in yesterday's wine. They kept contending and God is opening greater doors. And those doors, just like in 2005, when the revival came to the campus, about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and what we know today to be new creation realities. It happened in 2005. And that was the time when we were coming into this knowledge. We didn't even know these things. We were coming into this knowledge. The revelation of Kenyon's teachings. The revelation of Pastor Chris's teachings. I mean, I was so blessed. I'll never forget how many times we lock ourselves. Boy, we're stepping into things in the anointing. Those times, if someone fell on the floor, you will run and catch the person and take him to sick bay because you are not sure what happened but right now even in your prayer group three people even unbelievers now have acclimatized to the fact that there is a manifestation of the spirit and people can fall but we cannot stop there mm. and so what is there what else is there to look because the mistake that many of us are making in our churches and the rest is we are encamping around an experience and will not move as see a man of god is not the one who is supposed to look at the people he's supposed to set his eyes on the cloud the moment the cloud begins to motion movement he alerts the people and said the cloud is moving begin to follow and move are you listening to me because at that time we're taught that if there is no instant manifestation in your life something was wrong with your faith and so while the holy ghost was trying to deal with us and taking us through processes that will bring us into maturity those teachings were were wrestling his ministry in our lives but as an act of god's grace we're able to switch and to align and to realize that in hebrews 11 there were women who raised their dead back and women those times we could not explain what happens if a family dies hallelujah we don't know what message to tell them because we have been taught you are supposed to stand and live forever and any death is a sign of weakness and satan and so on and so forth but that was good to a measure but it is not applicable today there must need to be a growth and so we read from scripture by the holy ghost how that some people died are you listening to me without receiving the promise and he said other people raised their dead back to life he joined all the experiences and called it faith so we began to question the things that we have been believing not to scorn the people but to say look where they put full stop is supposed to be a comma there are many of you there are experiences god is giving you you have not found the confirmation yet i hope we have time wherever we can stop today and every time you go to your pastor they tell you no this kind of thing we, we don't like it you see that it is a new operation it's the manifestation of the new wine it must be discerned in an atmosphere where people have ears and they can tell you although this is strange we confirm by the spirit that this is an operation of the lord fire on many of you have stunted your spiritual growth because of different messages you have heard for instance i know people who say just pray for five minutes and pray for ten minutes you are a king speak it once <laughs> brother let me tell you the truth if that is how you want to raise your christianity there will be a bitter casualty that will teach you a lesson that may take decades for you to recover from because the bible gives us the character of a man of prayer he said elijah was a man of like passion he said he prayed earnestly Are you listening to me so there is nothing wrong 
in receiving the teachings that you have but i'm only saying we salute the generals i respect every man of god i mention them by name they have been impacts to our lives until today we still listen to them forever they remain generals they have entered the hallmark of grace however there is a fresh mandate upon our generation are you listening to me and according to the measure of grace that is coming upon us we cannot use the new discoveries we are having to mock them for that will be immaturity but at the same time we will not refuse to progress because we want to pay our homage and allegiance to their doctrines are you growing tonight because if i don't balance this many of you will now stand and watch some of our fathers and hear their revelation like I see a lot of people do and they just laugh they say I've left this realm when you find yourself doing that you are a child it's not demon possession the remedy is just to grow up are you listening to me I have tapes and tapes I follow the men of God ardently because listen although Eli's eye was dim it was Eli who told Samuel that it was the voice of God Eli was a type of our fathers although their eyes are getting dim not because they are backsliding but their dispensation and the blueprint of their prophetic agenda is coming to an end so there is a mantle transfer in the spirit although they may to some of you not look relevant we approach them with discretion one leg we are approaching the spirit and saying holy ghost we are trusting you and then we are receiving direction you see the balance so you don't begin to use your revelation and say ah this ministry they just teach on this and that and that no we appreciate them and we salute them forever they are called generals compared to them we are only but toddlers rising up in the spirit however he told jeremiah do not be afraid of the people and say i am young for i will put my words in your mouth he said go and speak so there is an emergence of people we will be persecuted because of our age and because we are not conforming to the mold of religion how be it there is a new wine and the one who sent us will stand to defend us this is why you will see a lot of young people doing supernatural things for god but then if we are careful and we are trained enough we will realize that in the midst of all of these things we ought to give god glory hallelujah so tell your neighbor change your full stop to a comma say it one more time change your full stop to a comma do not reject the operations of the spirit open up yourself please don't be caught up in that thing my church my pastor this is what we believe God is leading you to a book in the bookstore it may be by an author you don't like there's nobody I don't watch let your mind grow while nobody if I cannot learn anything at least I can learn diligence in ministry so you must maintain a posture are you listening to me So the dealings of the spirit when the holy ghost begins to walk and shed off a lot of religion from our lives follow me to romans please let's see how far we can get and then we'll pray blessed be the name of the lord can we pray in tongues for two minutes just seated go ahead and pray in tongues get used to it the bible says these signs will follow them that means when the authentic church arises by grace this will be part of the signs like I said there are many of you who probably may be here and have a problem with what we are doing don't reject it just open up your heart and seek understanding we are loving enough to explain Rabba kata praste pataka de bele de bos Rabba soto pondo ko proske pai Akria kate bele de bos Shaprosa Rabba tekete 
Lord, let me grow. Lord, let me grow. Lord, let me grow. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to lag behind. Hallelujah. The first thing that happens to you, hallelujah, the walk of a believer is that by acknowledging that Jesus is Savior over your life and His Lordship, the Bible makes us to understand that the Spirit of God comes to live in you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that is joined to Christ is what? one spirit so there is a oneness that happens from the realm of your spirit what is the result faith is imparted in you and suddenly you begin to gain meaning over spiritual things the things you would have rejected because the spirit of god lives in you he begins to direct you now watch this you will read in your bible as you progress in this journey now you are born again and then you begin to read in your bible let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich wonderful then you find another one you have been anointed to heal the sick to cast out devils wonderful you keep noting the scripture hallelujah by the time you have 30 or 40 beautiful scriptures now you will, you will rise up based on the confidence of those scriptures. God will not fail. Hallelujah. Then your first attempt on a man on a wheelchair, he doesn't stand. And then a question begins to brew in your heart. What happened? Hallelujah. And then you saw that you are the head and not the tail. Then your result came out and you saw a carryover. And you said, well, uh, uh, God is just something is there. you just leave the question mark there and then some of us go to our men of God and say please what meaneth these things I'm not getting it the things I see in scripture and the manifestation in my life is creating a contrast and most of us men of God all we tell God's innocent people because that is the limitation of the perspective that we see you don't have faith it's not enough stir up your faith if his faith is you walk now the people stay. How do I stay? And they get books. And they keep reading. They read different kinds of books. Volumes of books. To the point that they can recite the books. And then they don't see a noticeable improvement in their life. And they come back. And then we are unable to give them answers. Listen to me. The journey of a believer. The moment you give your heart to the Lord. Listen. You begin to progress from knowing God. To entering into an experiential walk with him are you listening to me and the experience of God with a man cannot be taught it is unique it is a unique dealing are you listening to me now through those experience your convictions about the things you see in the world begin to crystallize and gain substance are you listening to me the first area of argument is your mind the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Let's look at it quickly. Romans 8. From verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do what? They do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. He said for to be carnally minded. That means to be ruled by your senses. To be ruled by your emotions. To be ruled by the things you see. The things you hear. And all of these things. The Bible says to be ruled by them. Any other thing. Other than Christ. Is death. In other words. It is an effort in futility. Hallelujah. And so your mind begins to wrestle the things of God. Because when God steps into your life. Listen. He's not seeking a space. He's seeking the whole. He's not seeking a part of you and say okay other things uh -uh. the moment he stands there he begins to wrestle and push every other thing hallelujah and that's where the willing submission of a believer begins listen to me 
you can choose where to stop in your spiritual journey by saying lord i've tried and i've come thus far this one will not go god will begin to touch them one are you ready to listen to me so you love god so much and then one day god will say empty your account you say abba god i bind i reject that demon he has taught something he's bringing your finances into obedience with christ then he touches your your uncle who sent you money all the time say lord my faith is working now he doesn't send you money and what happens eh, my faith is still working after two months you really find out that the one you've been trusting was not god hallelujah and then he keeps touching those things until he comes to a point where he's exalted king i like a song that says he's exalted the king is exalted on high you know that song he's exalted the king is exalted on high powerful song So the Holy Ghost begins to wrestle your flesh. What happens? You are born again. And although you are shouting, but the issue of women, you have not, you have not surrendered that part. So there is half Babylon, half. You are, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And you are preaching. Hallelujah. But then you sit down and start remembering those days when you are in the, you are in the world. And every lady that passes around you, if any guy stands, you say, you are covering my view, please. There is a contention. This is what the Bible is telling us. Are you following me now? Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. It now begins to tell us, it said, now I say then walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It said, for the flesh lusted after the spirit and the spirit after the flesh and both of them are consistently under contention. And then although you are born again, you find out that you are still involved in masturbation and certain things. You may not tell people, but these are contentions. You are praying about it. I'm showing you the progression. Then you begin to see every kind of thing. When you are praying before God and you are praying in tongues, you begin to see God brings out the state of your heart. Envy, lust, jealousy. You say, Lord, me? Me? I'm a new creation. I'm born again. But then you are seeing your old man. Cain is alive and strong. Wrestling with Abel. And because Cain is the elder brother of Abel. That flesh, it had gained dominance in your mind. Now Abel wants to come and take his place. And so there is a contention. Are you listening to me? The old man does not want to give way. The old man does not want to give way. And then Satan gives you an alternative. He said, look, there is something called the grace of God and God's mercy. Why don't you wrap yourself around that revelation and let everything go? And so you are laughing. You are saying, hallelujah. All things are working well. But you sleep in the night and people come and press you and sleep with you. You get up in the morning and it's not a problem. You will never tell anybody. You're just smiling. But these are questions you are asking. And say, what is wrong with my new creation status? And God is saying, no, it's a journey. Your mind is giving room for Satan to find expression in your life. And you are unable to lay down everything. Are you listening to me? You love God. It does not mean you are a devil. Don't let anybody condemn you, but you must not condone your state. You must do something about it. Hallelujah. You never believed you could steal. One day, in the heat of hunger, you just saw 100 naira wanting to take it. The Holy Ghost told you it's your roommate's own. You can't say you didn't hear him. And he said, Lord, the flesh contending with the spirit. And he said, does it really matter? Lord, if I ask her, she will give me. So what's the difference? God is saying, ask them. 
because there is a protocol in the spirit and you just whistle and squeeze out and carry the hundred naira. You buy bonds and you eat. And God keeps quiet. It does not mean he's endorsing you. He's only encouraging you. Because a time will come his light will shine in that area of your life. While men slept. The enemy planted tears among the wheat. And the people who were with the husband man said should we begin to walk? He said no. In the process of pruning it you will remove some things. So let them grow. There is a level you get to then God will say alright about this issue of masturbation it's been two years and uh, although you have been healing the sick like can we deal with it now say no oh, i'm a new creation what kind of embarrassment is this oh lord don't bring up this issue and satan begins to give you an excuse we have a church that is so dignified and we cannot open up ourselves before god because we think it's an act of weakness can i tell you something friends if you must grow and be true if, if, if you must grow and be mature and stand in truth then you must open up your heart and let the holy spirit examine your mind and prune out everything that does not conform to christ hallelujah while that is happening you will seem to be standing in one place in your journey other people have started ministry since they are going they are already on air you are there cleaning out a lot of things. Are you listening to me? Because God is saying the kind of army I need to present. And your colleague who you started laboring in the spirit together has seven branches now. And the guy looks at you and says, are you, there's an urgency in the spirit. Let's run. The harvest is wide. And he says, are you prepared? The guy says, are you joking? Meanwhile, his choir ladies cannot rest again. Because the realm of the spirit does not know whether you are apostle or prophet. And so in the middle of the teachings, what happens? Cain, you look at a beautiful lady, patience. How? And then you are preaching. And then Cain says, this side again. And you look and you say, I have a prophetic word for you. Now, it's not your fault. You love the Lord. But you did not stay sufficient for the Holy Ghost to begin to take over your mind. So although you are prophesying, suddenly you are a prophet and you notice that Sam is the general manager of a bank. And by prophetic insight, you are giving access to his account number. Say, Sam, stand up. While you say stand up, the message that is coming from God is that you work steadfastly. But you add command to where God stops and Cain rides out with the prophecy. Say, more so, God is telling you to drop an amount. And because of the accuracy of your delivery, you are consoled and you think it is God. Are you listening to me? And so based on it, you open a ministry. But then you find out that there are many things. Although before people you are great, in the spirit you weigh very small. Because you have refused to stay in the spirit. And then your members begin to contend for truth. And they come to a point where they begin to discern that something is wrong although this guy is anointed and have the gift of the spirit we do not see the character that represents the posture of a matured man in the spirit then you begin to come up with all kinds of rules be quiet and don't challenge authority whatever we give you god will not talk to you people except he comes to us have you had teachings like that that's lack of fire in progress brothers the Bible is very explicitly clear mm, this is what you get in koinonia we want us to be strong listen I trust the Lord that the least person among us will be as strong as David we won't lie to you that's why we hold miracle services is that correct and you come we don't bug you with all these things we just pray but when it comes to building watch me there was a day now i'm careful to say this some years ago the lord told me that i should not open my bible for one week and i did not understand could that be the spirit of the lord or not but i eventually found out that it was god 
and God gave me the reason he said son every meeting that happens you are going like many of you are here with your notebooks it takes something in your head to be the head you know how Bishop Oedeko writes powerful statements take something in your head to be the head now he's writing you are jotting he's speaking from a depth of revelation you just want rema and he said boy if I preach on this in my Thursday fellowship they will know that I'm not an ordinary person now you are getting these things he's speaking from the bowels of the spirit but it came to you just as knowledge rema are you listening to me and now you are writing it and God told me he said son you have gotten many things that can move you forward but you are not moving forward you are junking your head with knowledge close your bible and let's begin to bring you into the experience of these revelations that you had so i didn't say you see it's my unique dealing that's why i can't write a book about it are you listening to me and god began to open me up I remember that's when God began to teach me on character. Look, let me tell you, I was walking in the anointing of the Spirit in a way you cannot imagine. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit asked me, this is the experiential dealing now. I'm teaching you how the Holy Ghost trains you. He begins to subject you through personalized experience that only you can tell. The only thing is when you share the experience with another person, you will find out that although the the patterns of dealings are different according to what he wants you to become but you see that there is a similarity of objectives what he's trying to achieve praise god and the holy ghost made me to draw a diagram of the fruit of the spirit versus their manifestation in my life personalized dealings he is training me he's now giving life to the head knowledge i've had of scripture i knew it so well but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace i knew this in right from sunday school but now there was it was now time for the reality and let me tell you something for the first time in my life my ego was torn to my knees i was shocked to find out that less than 10 percent of the fruit of the spirit was alive and walking although i was anointed although we we're praying for people although we had gone for crusades i said ah lord you have to help me thank god it's only me and you that is seeing this thing let's flog it out right now are you listening to me do not be embarrassed when god calls you to your knees as a general it's not a symbol of shame he's pulling you to lift you so don't be embarrassed to find out that there is an issue you need to flog out in your life don't let religion lie to you and say it's all over walk out that soteria that salvation with fear reverence for god and with trembling because it has consequences if you leave it hallelujah and when i began to do that i saw improvement in my life and people were happy when i went for ministration they said we have a very humble servant of god and i could imagine the holy spirit saying now you are you not enjoying the blessings i thought that was over later on again he said there's part two of that character dealing and he gave me another dealing and i found out i failed flawlessly although you people can see me and say wow great man of god it's only me and god that knows the dealings and the levels are you listening to me many preachers will not tell you this because they stand as omniscient omnipotent and omni whatever and let me tell you if they don't take steps they will be embarrassed because the realm of the spirit has no apology for what your members call you you begin to contend for the experience listen and in that contention you begin to know the holy ghost are you listening to me you begin to know the holy ghost there are certain promptings of the spirit that come upon me to know the kinds of anointings that are in a place i cannot teach you i can only explain it's my personalized dealing in the place of prayer there is a way and a manner that the holy ghost moves upon me that i know that i've hidden something in the spirit and i know that this prayer has been answered are you listening to me there is a way i can sense danger if somebody wants to call me maybe to pray for the sick sometimes few minutes before that time I suddenly sense the anointing of the spirit and I sense the presence of healing angels. How did I learn that? The experiential dealings of the spirit. This is how a believer grows. 
One day you are praying, suddenly your tongues begin to change. That's your first time of encountering it. And then you are saying, what is happening? Suddenly I found out that I cannot even talk again. I'm voicing, but I'm not speaking. These are questions. The Holy Ghost is luring you deeper with these experiences. People may reject it, but you know. Suddenly you, you are praying and you begin to sense the presence of people. You know that you are not alone in that room. And now your spirit is being trained. It's a customized dealing. This is not the type. There are many of you while I'm speaking right now. The first time I was speaking, you were caught up in the spirit. You didn't even know that it was a spiritual experience. Suddenly you found out that we're sharing the grace. And you just smiled. You went back home quietly. And then you ended that dealing. Instead of you to begin to contend with the spirit. Every time you prayed, you would lie down and see something that will happen exactly the next day. You trivialized it. But after seeing it two or three times, the Holy Ghost is saying, this is part of the tools you will need as my army. And so begin to take note of it. I sleep with notebooks. I sleep with my Bible, my notebooks, and my pen. Because at every time, you see, so you begin to walk with the Spirit. And you come to a point where you can look at someone and be able to help the person out of the abundance of your experiences. Are you listening to me? The atmosphere of your spirit is alive. Now your mind begins to submit gradually but surely to the lordship of the spirit. You begin to imbibe his word. His word now, the, the Holy Spirit begins to orchestrate occasions that will make the word be living and active in your life. So it's no longer just a logos here. It has become true. Are you listening to me? And then one time you will have cause. And your father or your mother will not send you money. And the Holy Ghost will say, I want to show you a dimension of me that is accessible. I want to train you and build you. And then he says, now depend on me. Get up and go to your friend's room. As you are stepping into your friend's room, you see him with an envelope of 5,000. He says, the Lord was leading me. And you say, so that dealing I thought was my mind was the Holy Ghost. You are growing. There is a progression. Are you listening to me? There is a progression. Suddenly you sit down and you sense, guys, something is wrong. And you just tell your colleague, let's pray. Let's pray. Five minutes later, they call. And they say, someone had a ghastly motor accident and he would have died. And God said, note that impression. I will make reference to it again. Your customized dealings with the spirit. This is how a Christian becomes a mature person. Because over time, you begin to gather these things and the Holy Ghost begins to shed light and he begins to teach you. So, prayer becomes exciting. Not because you want to go and do religion. You anticipate a new experience. And so you are praying and wondering what next will the Holy Ghost do. Suddenly you are praying on your own. The next thing you wake up and find out that you were on the floor. When you fell, you did not know. You thought you were too praying, but suddenly you found out that you had been in a vision for a long time. And you say, Lord, what, what is going on in my life? The dealings. Are you learning something, please? And you begin to pray. Then you begin to build. There are times that you are sleeping and God gives you a dream and you get up and there is no direct application of that dream in your life. The dream was an explosion of your mind and your spirit to acclimatize with the dealings of God so that scripture will now begin to make sense based on the things you have visualized in your dreams. So you find yourself walking on water and in that dream, a lot of people say, Mami water, calm down. Don't just call everything Satan. You find yourself walking with Jesus on water in a dream. He's giving you the feeling so that when you come back and open that scripture, light that never entered you will now enter you. There are times in the dream you see yourself laying hands on the sick and you have the feeling of victory, the manifestation of faith. And every time God will preserve that memory in your mind so that the next time you see somebody in a wheelchair, you have that same feeling and it will, end, it will help the anointing to flow in your life. And suddenly for the first time, it will be like a dream. Are you following me tonight? The dealings of the spirit. Bringing the knowledge of God into the experience of God for you. 
then you begin to speak you are understanding the operations of the spirit now when you stand to preach listen you will not just talk as if you are talking your convictions are getting stronger listen when you experience God that's the only condition that you can die for him it's not by confession are you listening to me stand up sweetheart my dear look at me if I call you a man what will you do about it there are too many experiences in your life that have crystallized in your spirit soul and body that you are a lady is that correct for instance men don't wear with one except there's something wrong with them except there is a drastic shortage of the dealings of the spirit in their lives please sit down now this is a lady if you give birth to a baby listen do you know if you separate a baby from any other person and you keep telling that baby you are a boy you are a boy although she's a lady she will grow up knowing and thinking and acting like a man because the first experience she receives is on account of what you are speaking to her are you listening to me that's why God designed the trainings of ladies and men to be such that no man can deceive another when the guy becomes a teenager suddenly his voice is getting husky final betrayal nothing can deceive him that he's a lady and then he sees mustache on his face uh, all these things begin to tell him look mr man you are not a lady and then what are they doing there are memories in his mind and then he comes to a point where he's convinced and he can die believing that he's a man such that when americans are saying right now uh there are factors we need to look at to ascertain whether a man is a man or a woman you say you are on your own I know and I am persuaded that I'm a man. This is how it must be. But when you do not walk with the spirit, and this is the ministry of the fivefold, to bring us to a point where we create the roadmap. Listen, what we do is we plant and we water, but it's your dealings with God that brings increase in your life. Are you listening to me? Our job is to open up a portal and lead you and say, go. And then you begin to experience certain dimensions of God. You have been reading every time. The Bible talks about tithing. And then you have been saying, wow. If they ask you in Sunday school, you answer discipleship, you answer. CRS, you answer and you do very well. And then one day God begins to tell you, all right, you've been reading this thing. When will you put it to work? Experience. Knowledge translating into experience. Now you come out here and stand and you drop the tithe. And listen to me, God will oftentimes cause the result to happen instantly so that you can see the difference. You are just dropping it and the next time, it may not happen like that all the time. This is what happens to new converts. Every prayer is answered. Before they pray to be answered. And they are like, man, this Christianity, that means most Christians are lazy. Then one day you pray and it's not answered that fast. And God will say, alright, uh, I was just helping you to be encouraged. So that should in case you don't get an answered prayer, you know you once had one and you can follow me. Then he begins to teach you. you want to, have you seen many believers who say, I just got saved. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I started praying for the sick immediately and truly they were healed. Ask them after five years whether they continued. It was a motivation. God is smart. He knows how to encourage you. It was a bonus to encourage you that look, you are seeing believers praying and fasting. You didn't pray, you didn't fast. Rema just came. And you say, if this is how it is, then I can be a preacher. And then one day you are starved of revelation. The Bible becomes a blank page from Genesis to Revelation. And then he begins to teach you the principle of receiving from the Spirit. Then you begin to honor the people you have once criticized. And say, oh, I respect your fast. You know, you were not wasting your time. A body that becomes matured not just in knowledge but in experience that's why i like our mothers they have gone through childbirth they have escaped accidents so whenever they are talking about the faithfulness of god no matter whether they are not concerned whether i can place well or not you just raise a song 
even if it's oh come oh ye faithful they just close their eyes because it's a reflection of their experience they have come to know god when they were giving birth to the third child they almost died and they called on his name and he brought salvation so whenever they read and they say the lord is my strength and my light they have an experience that can relate to that knowledge and for them it's not waste hmm. are you listening to me a woman who has five children and four died in an accident and then see this is one of the reasons why when you hear a man who has experienced God when he speaks you will cry because he's speaking from the depth of his experience I remember listening to Reverend Dr. Umar Upai, lost his children after a crusade after a crusade his children drowned and died he had to start a new family again so when he reads the book of job and job said though he slay me he will say yes because there is an experience he has gotten that dimension of god and nobody will take it away have you gotten the experience for the revelations you are shouting about for that may be the missing link Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you come to a point where you experience certain things. Don't waste your experiences. Let the Holy Ghost use them as a training ground to make you mature. That's why the Bible says, count it all joy when you face diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith will produce patience and let patience have its full course. There is an end. It will make you become something. When you come to Koinonia, there are different kinds of worshippers. Those who have experienced what the worship people are singing. Are you following me now? That's why when who raised worship? Sam, come. If Sam if Sam comes to stand here and sing and say, um, Lord, I give you my heart. If there is no experience to validate that revelation, you will know because there is an absence of truth. Have your way in me. Lord, even if he's kneeling down, you just know that there is a separation between this man and the spirit of this song. An experience has not brought it into light. Hallelujah. But if you waited 10 years before getting admission and he said, Lord, I love you. And he says, Lord, I give you my heart. You cannot explain. It may not even be his voice. His experience is doing something to your spirit. Deep is calling on to deep. Have your way in me. That's why he can compose other versions and not care about what you are thinking because those versions relate to his experience when he, that's why you see when whenever we say sing in the spirit or express yourself to the lord some people just stand it's not your fault you've never had to look for school fees by yourself you've never had to trust god for his faithfulness you've never had to you are too innocent there is no experience so the bible is just like a book and you just know the memory verses but somebody whose whose name came out in part list has an experience about the faithfulness of God somebody whose mother was almost dying of childbirth and they had to come together praying day and night knows that there are demons in the village and that prayer can conquer Satan so while you are talking English on stage that revelation the memory of the times he had to spend to travel that memory is too deep for your deceits to just take him out that becomes a platform for a healthy prayer life so right now, your prayer life is not founded upon intimidation from your colleagues. There is an experience that has provoked you to the place of prayer. And you know you must remain there as a matter of life and death. Hallelujah. And then the Bible. Have you ever had certain experiences? And then some songs you used to listen to that don't make sense. Later, make sense. And then you just feel like listening to Don when you have criticized. His keyboard suddenly makes sense to you. He never sleeps. And, that, and you begin to cry. It's an experience that is making you grow. Because out of that experience, the word of God will now come alive. Are you getting blessed, please? 
so it's not enough to write god is telling you to write all those things in your notebook because the day the experiences of your life will bring you into the knowledge of that aspect of god you will appreciate what you have written that's why when you hear some people talking you see you see pastors standing up they are touched by the statement and the members are saying what nonsense is this the day you start running your own church after three years you stand up for every man that says what they said that you were just watching because four four weeks after you begin to pastor the four weeks is full of crisis that you have to settle and you say lord did you call me so next time you are seeing somebody say god is faithful and the man of god is relating it to his pain his pain has become a message that helps him to understand what the holy spirit can do in the in a man's life this is how believers become matured and if this is not taught in the body of christ we are going to have a crippled people are you listening to me so you get up based on these experiences My wallet has been missing for a long time. If it was before, I called it forth, called it forth. It didn't come. I said, Lord, look, I have, I have better things to pray about. I have a, a family of believers we need to train. But remember one time, I gave you a story that an angel came and brought it. I prayed. I said, where is that angel? Hallelujah. The rigor of going through ATM activities right now and all the things there. But when your heart is with God, anything that leaves you cannot, it only creates more space for Him to fill. So you see a believer walk and you are wondering how do people live like this? They just sat your father and he comes back dancing. And you are like daddy are you joking my school fees he says don't worry i don't know what will happen but i remember in 1975 a similar thing happened and there was a song that i sang many of you don't have experiences that you can fetch this is why testimony is important when you give testimony you give people a tool that they can use to fight satan tomorrow and then you become a matured christian Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin went through all kinds of sicknesses that wanted to kill him. So when he stands ministering to people, God brings that memory. And out of that memory comes compassion. And from that compassion, the anointing will flow. You've not had any experience. That's why you say, this miracle service said, why are people always falling? The day you have their kind of disease, you will value our ministry. Hallelujah. Why must you prophesy? You are wasting our time, Jerry. The day your father looks at you and says, now you have become an adult, fend for yourself. You will know whether you have believed God or not. And then you, you will begin to sing songs, including Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Now it will not be special number. An experience has compelled you to appreciate that revelation of the word. To the point that whenever you read John 3.16, you can start crying on stage people are saying john 3 16 it's not about the verse it has made you to know the holy spirit in a certain way that you wouldn't know him this is how the ancient were dealt with by god certain experiences open certain dimensions of god and so they knew that god was certain things and they died believing it what do you believe about god how have your experiences helped you to come into the knowledge the experiential knowledge of God some of the dealings of God in our lives is what has given us audacity to be able to stand and declare certain things and you watch and say how old are these people that they speak with such audacity it's not about the age it's the depth of the experiences Am I ministering to someone tonight? We are going to pray. When that happens, listen to me. You come to a point where you do not trust any other thing again aside from God. At that point, he becomes king of kings and lord of lords. Then you will now appreciate my song. King of my life, you are my all. Don't sing it. 
and I live for you alone. I wrote that song on Valentine's Day. And I lay my life for you. Listen, my heart is yours. Is it making sense to you now? My mind is yours. My will is yours. You're the king of my life. So when the worship team raises, you say, ah, this song is not sweet. You, you enter an experience that will make that bitter water become sweet. And then every day you hear it. You say, ah, you may not know the song. You just say, my heart. And you keep saying my heart. And you are crying. And it's ministering to you. And you are shedding tears. And you are, you are shedding tears. When the victory comes, you take note of that song. Have you seen your, your parents noted certain songs? It doesn't make sense to you why they like it. They sang it the day you will be delivered. You almost died. Your father was almost dying of hypertension around the labor room. And that song ministered to him. And every time you sing it, he remembers you and the destiny of God in your life. Many of you look at my name and say, my name is not Abba. Why would they name me Joy? And then they will tell you the experience that led to that name. That they waited 10 years with no child and then you came and they rejoiced and then they called you joy say it doesn't matter then three years you didn't get admission the day you get you say my name is joy the revelation has brought you to a position where you begin to appreciate certain things believers we need to grow. This is where God is taking us. When that happens, the consummation of all things is that your body begins to experience that soteria. And then you can allow your body to be a channel through which the life and the power of God can flow to others. Your vocal cords become instruments through which you will communicate his life and power to others. At that point, you become useful. But can I tell you something? This is the journey. Stop looking for power and manifestation. What you should be searching for right now is God. Say, Lord, give me an experience. An experience. Beyond Christianity. An experience. An experience. Lord, I desire an experience with you. I've had knowledge. I've had so many things. So when you hear Michael Smith say, it's all about you, you'll be wondering and say, ah, all about him. But Lord, I've given you all and the Bible says I've been bought with a price. I pray that the Lord will lead you into the pathway that will cause his word to come alive in you. At that point, nobody will tell you to do evangelism again. It will not be guesswork. Listen, when God opens up the operations of the spirit in your life he brings you to a point where your mind and your intellect betrays you again and again and there is only one option left god and your love for him like a trinkuman you say lord i'm available and you mean it from the depths of your heart and when he begins to use you you will there's there will never be room for pride because the memories of the dealings will remain in your heart Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. The experiential dealings of the Spirit. That God will give you experiences. Listen. I like that song. Keep playing because we are going to sing it. But before we sing it, I know we are out of time but just listen to me you are going to pray and in that prayer you are going to cry unto God and say Lord there are many things I know but they have not become life in my life can you give me an experiential revelation of God can you use the things around me to bring me to a point where I begin to 
appreciate you strengthen my conviction about the things i believe lift up your voice and begin to pray strengthen my conviction oh god let my faith not fail me strengthen my convictions that when i say god is faithful i mean it that when i say god is holy i mean it that when i say i'm righteous i mean it come on pray in the place of prayer as i study the word i'm tired of reading letters let the word become flesh strengthen my christian experience make my life a qualitative one go ahead and pray say lord i subject my mind to the power of your spirit i subject my mind to the power of your spirit breathe upon me holy ghost breathe upon my mind affect my life breathe upon me my thinking faculty invade my mindset change me help me not to trust in any other thing help me not to trust in any other thing the songwriter says my faith is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness he said on Christ the solid rock strengthen my Christian experience that when I say I love you let it come from the depth of my heart strengthen my Christian experience that when you send me, I will be faithful. Pray. Say, Lord, I want to grow beyond religion. Holy Ghost, begin to take me through your experiential dealing that is unique to me. Your experiential dealing that is unique to me. Let it make me strong. Let it make me know you. Hey, brothers and sisters the knowledge of God through your experiences become your message to the world the knowledge of God through your experiences will become your sermon you will shout it at the mountain top you will shout it nobody will stop you because it's not just a sermon it's your experience it's your story of how God took you through the dealings on the anointing, the dealings on character, the dealings on, on marriage, the dealings on habits. He said, He that bears fruit, my father will prove. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, I want to be a strong Christian. Give me reason to pursue you in truth. Give me reason to pursue you. Abalaba seda ba karya da balada da. Ashata balada ba. Lembra da balada mala Maria da ba kala balada ba. Strengthen my convictions before you send me, O oh God. For what will I tell the nations in the face of challenges? Strengthen my conviction. Let me be thoroughly taught in the school of the Spirit. Pray. Mata Barakata Holy Ghost Let my experiences make you become A friend indeed That stick and closer Hallelujah. Except you see miraculous signs, you shall not believe. Luke chapter 5 we'll read the first 11 verses 
that miracles can help to create solid convictions Charles and Francis Hunter powerful evangelists they've gone to be with the Lord now they wrote a book that a miracle is worth a thousand words I believe them I believe them the world is tired of our noise and our stories they want to see a demonstration and a manifestation of the reality of the life and the power of God it says and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God he stood by the lake of Gennesaret next verse please and saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets uh-huh we're reading to 11 and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship next verse now when he had left speaking he said unto simon launch out into the deep and let your nets for a drought five what happened Simon answering said master we have toiled all night in other words he said Lord look you are not the first to pray for me a man of God prayed for me in Zaria another man prayed in wherever you know so God is one of those things you bless me oh yeah do it master we have toiled all night not for a few hours all night night vigil looking for a fish and did not catch even one it says nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net six and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their seven and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships miracles can create relationships that you get a miracle and partners that were minding their business you can say come and join me who will not follow someone with results who will not let me tell you the bible talks about a wealthy man and um, how did he put it now a poor man that we even with much entreaties they will run away from him there are many people that come from where we come from and will pass us as if they don't know us because you represent shame and anything that looks like Ichabod, the departure of the glory, men will usually find a way to excuse it from. Ah, but the Bible says you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah, a delight. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sing. Verse 8 when simon peter saw this look at this this is what miracles do he fell down at jesus's knees saying depart from me i'm a sinful man was a sermon preached a serious miracle happened and that miracle created conviction the same way some of you have been laughing at men of god sincerely and laughing at everything that has to do with the power of god and by the time we'll be sharing the grace tonight you will stand and go back quietly not talking to anybody and say i've seen today i heard with my ears like job but i've seen with my eyes that god is real and his power is real his grace is real nine for he was this is what led to the repentance he was so men can be astonished to repentance that they look at your life and say promise when did this happen when did god lift you was it not last year together we were discussing and you tell him there is a name god is called though, the lifter of men the lifter of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters run away from anybody who tell you results don't matter they do they do out of the abundance of the evidence of the workings of God in your life the nations will bow to your God they will never bow to you just because you are talking man of God hear me no results you have MP pews there's there's no way around it there must be an evidence a serious evidence when John questioned the messiahship of jesus he didn't answer with a statement he said go and tell john what you have seen the blind see 
the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the gospel is preached to the meek. And then he says, blessed is he that is not offended. So the moment there are no miracles, the messiahship of the Christ is questioned. John himself, the one who ordained Jesus, said, go and ask him, is he the messiah? Miracles confirm that Jesus is the messiah. God is not a herbalist. He's not a herbalist that is ahead of other herbalists. No. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. There are people who have names. Politicians have names. Businessmen have names. Captains of industry. Gatekeepers of mountains have names. But my brothers and my sisters, there is a name. It says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. And it's in that name tonight that we will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness. The miraculous manifests the glory of God and causes people to not only believe God, but to trust God. John chapter 2 and verse 11. The first miracle of Jesus, what we call the miracle at the wedding of the Cana of Galilee. He turned water to wine. The Bible says this beginning of miracles, this beginning of, not this beginning of sermons, not this beginning of discussions, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him believed on him we believe in the God that heals and saves and delivers that's why we kept the seats for you that's why we, we knew you would come because the hand of God will bring you and we knew you would not be disappointed brothers and sisters there is a God in heaven God is not a herbalist. Don't let your pain demean him. He is still the king of the universe. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good it takes the manifestation of the power of god to do good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him for god was with him for god was with him we're going to pray you have to convince yourself it's going to be a quick walk and we're going to cry to God and say, Lord, whatever I carried from my house, whatever I carried from my place of work that I've brought before you, it should not return back with me. It should be clear and evident that I met the Lord Jesus Christ. It should be clear and evident. Right where you are sitting, you will soon stand up, but right where you are sitting, I'd like you to talk to the Lord. Please be serious and be desperate. Lord, I have come to you. I've come to you. I've come to you. I've come to you. My life must be changed. My finances must be changed. My destiny must be changed. Lord, I've come to you as a pastor. I've come to you as a prophet, as an apostle. There has to be greater oil upon my life. Lord, I hear you are a restorer. Restore me. Online, please make sure you are praying. Those outside, make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayer. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it says we were like them that dream, and our mouths were filled with laughter. 
and said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for them it says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev turn again our captivity there is a God that can turn around the captivity of men pray doesn't matter where you are seated doesn't matter where you are connecting from the power of God is able to save to the uttermost father I'm praying that infirmity in my body must leave this night. That financial situation must die this night. That oppression that has kept my family down. Did the Bible not say this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith? A miracle worker, God is a glorious God, God is a miracle worker, God is a glorious shortly and I'll begin to minister by the Spirit your own assignment is to receive you have come let me tell you something there is enough grace to solve whatever challenge it is that has plagued you yours is to believe in the power of God it says if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A lady, the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside. Please carry her and bring her now. There is a lady I'm seeing. I just saw light from in here. Write the power of God upon that lady. Please bring her. Please bring her. And then bring the someone on this row. I'm seeing like, like a smoke just going round. 
and it's like he's locating someone the power of God is going to come on someone please speak the person and bring the person out you reign you reign hello from outside I crush the hand of captivity over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I crush the hand of captivity over your family in the name of Jesus I saw a lot of oppression over the life of this lady and in the name of Jesus we silence the voice of wickedness we silence the voice of wickedness hold on please the Lord is showing me something right now. I saw this while I ministered in Abel Kuta. I started seeing snakes on the ground. Snakes on the ground. And that's what I'm seeing right now. And this is, this is the manifestation of a spirit. And there are many families that are under this yoke. Whether you believe it or not, just let me minister to you. I'm declaring right now, the power of God is going to start coming on people that represent those families. Bring them out. You are not shouting anything. You are not saying anything. Bring them out. I'm speaking by the Spirit. The Word of God has been declared. There are families. I'm seeing serpents, snakes, snakes, inside and outside. Bring them. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. And the captives of the mighty, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, I judge those spirits wherever you are, represented in anyone here, represented in anyone here, I speak by the hand of God. You reign, you reign, hello, bring them out. I'm still on that case. The power of God is still locating people. I'm seeing snakes. Jesus I'm still praying we're not doing too many things tonight we're going to the root of many people's challenges I'm saying it again there are still spirits and I speak by the anointing of the Spirit of God wherever they are overflow one two three across the road I'm declaring judgment judgment upon those spirits the fire of God is coming upon you right now whether you are standing for yourself or for your family bring them out there is no escape for when his voice comes they come out from their hiding place Hallelujah. Now listen, there are people I'm seeing something that looks like a knife being inserted in people and I'm seeing people beginning to run just run when you see people doing that hold them and bring them the Lord is bringing deliverance that one is not speed 
this one is not the prayer for speed I'm just telling you as the Lord is showing me right now I decree and declare I don't know those that the Lord is cutting them free from every kind of diabolism but I stretch my hands by the spirit I command judgment on every force judgment on every power in the name of Jesus Christ the hand of God is coming upon them you will begin to see them run around just running is it's, it's not a, a making of their own it's by the power of the Holy Ghost bring them out Oh, 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 my help has come. Oh, 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 my help. Oh, 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 my help has come. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave in the name of jesus christ and at the count of three any family whether territorially or by whatever connection is tied to the spirit of the grave i'm declaring at the count of three as you shout jesus the power of god is setting you free one two three the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave came the spirit of the grave I cost you by the God of heaven the spirit of the grave I cost you by the God of heaven just follow me this night now I'm praying for all those in front they came out because the Lord showed something I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three I speak to these spirits release everything you have taken from these families one two go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies out of their lives out of their destinies I command a release I command a release I command a release release breakthroughs release open doors hallelujah we are going to pray please just pay attention and let God help you you came here tonight to receive listen to me the Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you or it may happen once in a while this is a strange oppression of darkness and i declare i'm praying right now i'm seeing fire all over this place because there are many people that is the root cause of many oppressions in your life at the count of three you will shout that name again that is above every other name and some of you will feel something leaving you immediately i declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions at the count of three let there be emancipation one two get ready three i command those spirits go now strangers of the night strangers of the night help that gentleman strangers of the night Rekete perekata, embrekete te 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 te. 
bring them out strangers of the night I curse you by the God of heaven molesting the saints planting sicknesses in their bodies Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim. Hello, Kim Madonna. a certain family here I'm seeing that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone something that has to do with a stone I don't know what that means and in what tribe but I'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone I don't know if it's for protection or for whatever but in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that any fraternity with the elements of Christ let it be broken now in the name of Jesus help them please let it be broken now in the name of Jesus fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus the mysteries behind the strange hardship of people the mysteries behind the oppression of people oppression of families doors doors are opening that's what i'm seeing in the spirit doors doors some of you will feel fire on your hands fire on your hands doors are opening two leaf gates in the spirit fire on your hand you will know by the fire that comes to your hand i'm seeing fire coming on people's hands that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit doors opening you must testify doors opening doors opening doors opening age long doors age long doors that have been closed for many years I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains being taken from your feet, chains being removed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I saw an angel stand there, chains being taken up from your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, chains being taken from off your feet. Listen, let me explain something to you. This is not just some disorganized jamboree. God is turning the destinies of men up. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy, Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now. There are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life, but there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me. I'm speaking by the Spirit. 
I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals, individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, once I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. I stretch my hands now among the Emmanuel's and the people delay 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 there is an anointing coming now is crushing that spirit just because I'm praying for Emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you in the name of Jesus delay delay God is visiting delay broken by the Spirit of God Please help them so they don't injure themselves. He came to set the captives free. To set the captives free. Hold on. This young lady, lift your hands. This, this, yes, you. Lift your hands. I'm stretching my hands towards you. I don't know what it is that I saw, but I saw something like smoke. The other one, the smaller one with white. Yes. I just saw something like smoke coming out of you. And the Lord is saying this is oppression for many years. That has something to do with your abdominal region. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that oppression go. Let it leave you. Let it go. Let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus there is a woman, now I'm going to pray for people generally, but I don't know how we'll do this. There is a barren woman in overflow three. Barren woman, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Please, if, if you can allow the woman to run and come, God is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child. Overflow three, please let her run and come. Yapone na kawo Sujata ne na kawo Sir King Salam Sir King Aljana Yapone na kawo Maureen, I'm hearing a name, Maureen. 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 What is your name? Lift your hands. Where are you from? Shout Jesus loud as you can. Jesus! Let the power of witchcraft over your life be broken my dear look at me look at me shout Jesus. Jesus I crush that spirit right now in the name of Jesus and the man you see in your dream in the name of Jesus may you never see that man again please make sure you they don't why is mama here is she Maureen this woman I, I'll pray for you that woman come madam is that your daughter? Come, madam. Where are you coming from, ma? Let her come. Sir? Where are you coming from? I'm from area C. Area I'm C? No, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Mama, you are a sincere woman. But if I did not pray for you, huh? it's a bike that will kill you from the market in an accident. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck and they just say survive by that the woman is dead I'm not a prophet of doom mama please don't be afraid in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands I extend your life by the power of the Holy Spirit 
that the plague of death see let me prophesy upon someone here anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year i'm praying by the spirit now i'm praying by the spirit and in the name of jesus anyone that the spirit of death is haunting anyone being haunted by the spirit of death i command that it is crushed now in jesus name What is your name, my dear? Maureen, come. You will look at a beautiful lady like this, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing a human being, but no face. No face like this. I'm just seeing a blank face like this. Let me tell you what this means. It's a yoke of bad luck that people stand and cannot bless you. You have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded. The lady on yellow, lift your hands. There's the call of God upon your life. There is a prophetic grace that is upon you. And the Lord is saying you are stepping into it right now. I stretch my hands to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into that grace. I'm still praying for her. In the name of Jesus I declare. I'm seeing fire coming upon you right now. And that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. bad luck listen i'm going to hold her but a different person is the one that will receive before i pray for her this is just allow me do my my mad thing hold my hand in the name of jesus i'm not praying for her i'm praying for someone now by the spirit of the lord but the lord is saying i should hold her as i pray for the person lord in the name of jesus this yoke of bad luck i'm speaking now please help them this yoke of bad luck by the power of the Holy Spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you in the name of Jesus let it be broken now 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 now let me pray for you be free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I take away this that I'm seeing and in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We're going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen. Are you married? You are married? Yes, sir. But you don't have a child? Yes, sir. From Overflow 3? Yes, sir. Where's your husband? not here it's not but you're married yes sir. come and stand here and watch the god of wonders i don't know you madam from overflow three you are from overflow three you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb why did you come your name is maureen what do you do madam hold on i'm a business woman you're a business woman where i used to sell at the young um random canoe but right now the business is scattered. do you know why i'm asking you no I must pray for you because this thing is not only you there is nobody doing well in your family your entire family this is what i'm seeing is a spirit huh? except you open up something and miss even physical money used to get missing from you you will keep money and count it and found find out that it's not what you kept is that true if i'm lying just say i'm lying where are you from from a new Anambra state. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the state Anambra. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state. Anyone, usually when God shows me this, anybody who is from that state connected by blood, the power of God begins to come upon them to bring deliverance. It's a sign and a wonder. I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus that anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you be free right now in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus please help them be free in the name of Jesus Anambra state be free in the name of Jesus I'm still seeing the map in my vision be free in the name of Jesus 
my friend that young man holding his hands shout jesus from where you are the yoke is broken i cast it out of your life forever in the name of jesus christ madam i need to pray for you don't feel bad look at me you insulted a woman some years ago and the woman told you it will not be well with you it was like a joke truly the thing followed you this is what god is showing me now i'm not a prophet of doom i'm going to pray for you i don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it you insulted the woman and she stood and told you that it will not be well because what you were saying about her was not what she did hold my hands the bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered let me tell you my brothers and my sisters the scourging tongues of men the scourging tongues of men except you know where you stand a cause causeless shall not stand but if there is a cause it will stand though it will stand are we together now i will pray where are your siblings madam hi this woman no oh. you are not here alone where are the rest call them just stand where you call what is their name hgk quickly please and victor hgk come and and who victor that is and victor son. yes victor is not your brother victor is a small my boy son, yes. where is he let him come because i'm seeing the boy you are saying victor is a little boy ah uh, are you married yes you have a son yes your son's name too is victor yes he's the one i'm calling is the boy that you are talking yes. about you said your brother no hgk is my brother then let the boy come son. as young as that boy is too if i don't pray for him he will start stealing eh? there are two boys small boys that will be delivered from this spirit no matter where you keep anything they must steal it we are not condemning people i hope you understand what i'm saying here god is delivering people to the pure all things are pure nobody is calling any family a bad family but this is a place where god is visiting people where is the person please come celebrate him as he comes you're welcome sir i will pray for you god is going to turn your family around this is a little boy my friend how are you come how old are you 11 years old you love jesus yes sir. i will pray for you how can a nice boy like this and the next thing start picking things do you know let me tell you these small children that steal are not thieves it's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment it was not dealt with because most of what they steal they don't need it that's how you know it's a spirit are we together yes that's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy don't assume they will be spiritual by default my friend let me pray for you father thank you for this adorable young man and this guy has a great destiny you see this boy i'm looking at a star rising as i'm laying my hands on him this is what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus christ i pray for you you will be a great man by the power of the holy spirit hold this woman the anointing of the spirit is coming on her in the name of jesus christ sir what do you do a medical sales representative you are a medical sales representative medical sales representative can i pray for you you are a sincere person eh? but this thing they are just forces that want to destroy your family i will pray for you huh april may june it will look like you held a charm the way god will turn your life around you believe it in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you madam come the power of god is coming upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare this thing that i'm seeing tied to your waist i lose it right now by the power of the holy spirit be set free now in the name of jesus christ you are the one trusting god for a child come how long have you been married three years three years no child you too are you married five years five years four months no child no 
actually the doctor said after two surgeries they said my husband cannot impregnate me he did surgery twice don't cry jesus is here huh you went through two surgeries where is your husband he's at home he's at home don't cry where are you from where are you coming from Greatland. you see th these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through sometimes we take some things for granted imagine the advices someone now will recommend and say go to a herbalist go and do this and don't cry my sister two surgeries you went through mm. my head now i'm seeing something being removed from your stomach look at what is happening to her yes she went through two surgeries in the name of jesus christ i command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you in the name of jesus i set you free now madam i set you free now i'm praying for the rest but i set you free now hold my hands come in the name of jesus I declare supernatural miracle for you now release this woman now as I'm praying for you I'm praying for your husband wherever he is according to the time of life may you return with your miracle children it's over in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God my dear let me why is this woman here you are married to madam no child how long four years and um, five months four years five months where are you coming from jigawa state from jigawa state please come oh dear all over stunning things God is dealing with these issues because he has declared that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness is fruitfulness from any dimension any dimension look at this woman look at these women crying I may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in I think is the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family that you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister please don't cry who brought you here you came alone Sarah. Huh? Sarah. oh dear put your hand on your stomach is she a christian she's she's a christian okay it doesn't matter whether you are a muslim or christian the lord everybody the lord healed in the old testament he healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over you just act like this just to show honor and respect people i will pray for you there is a name that is above every other name and in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon your womb and i declare the embargo of barrenness five years barrenness let it be broken right now Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing. But I'm seeing something come out of you. And you are coughing. Coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? blessing where's your husband he's not here he's not here father in the name of jesus i don't care what the medical report is we agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now i decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now 
I correct it by the power. Ah, I'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach. This is what I'm saying. You will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a, look at what is happening to her. A correction, a correction of whatever is wrong. In the name of Jesus. Why are they here? Fruit of the womb. Uh, we are not praying at random. We we'll pray, Madam, I will pray for you. Where are you coming from? Huh? Nasarawa State. Nasarawa State. Are you alone? No, I'm You came with who? Only me. Only you. Come. Just the woman. I will pray for her. We have to pray for the sick. But how many of you have seen what God is doing here? Listen, you see, if you love the Lord and you see God attacking. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord just showed me something now. I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire. And the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now I'm seeing a family of one, two, three, four, five, six graduates. Nobody's employed. Six graduates. You are all graduates. Nobody has a job. Who is that person? Six graduates. Please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out. Six graduates. No job. Not one person has a job. I want to pray for you. You're the one for the fruit of the womb. Huh? I have to pray for you. I'm seeing something in your stomach. Have you gone to the hospital? You've spoken with a doctor? Don't be embarrassed. I'm seeing something growing in your stomach. And this is not a baby. I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you, you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me. And I'm going to pray for you. Where are you coming from, madam? Kano. Kano. Is your husband here? Is your husband here? Yes. Where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here. He's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Think come out of you. Trinity to hand their lives. Trinity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing. But I'm seeing something come out of you. And you are coughing. Coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not here. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life, return with your child. Whatever needs to be corrected in this body now, I correct it by the power. Ah, I'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. You will feel it now physically 
like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we are not praying at random we we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasrawa state nasrawa state are you alone no I'm you came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking in the name of jesus christ the lord just showed me something now i'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people i decree in the name of jesus christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of jesus by the mercy of god let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now I'm seeing a family of one, two, three, four, five, six graduates. Nobody's employed. Six graduates. You are all graduates. Nobody has a job. Who is that person? Six graduates. Please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out. Six graduates. No job. Not one person has a job. I want to pray for you. You're the one for the fruit of the womb? Huh? I have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed i'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby i will pray for you because if i don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the lord is showing me and i'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam kano kano is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he husband sir please come there's Daddy, something the lord wants to do in your family don't worry he's, he's here he's coming thank you sir thank you for coming god bless you i want to pray for you you came from kano too you came from kano too sir i'm going to pray for you number one god is going to give you the fruit of the womb number two God is restoring your finances. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God is restoring your finances. Amen. This is a serious issue. As you are here coming now, the financial trouble you are into is only God that can bring you out. Amen. Is that true? God is going to help you. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, why are they here? Six graduates, no job. In the name of Jesus Christ, father by your mercy and by your grace let there be a sign and a wonder in the life of this woman just keep her down in the name of jesus i declare by the power of the holy spirit everything that is wrong be corrected now in the name of jesus sir please can you hold my hands in the name of jesus i speak over your finances there is a grace that can restore and i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ madam let me talk to you and then we'll pray for the sick you are the both of you where are you coming from you are here in zaria yes and you are, yes i know your face six graduates no job yes sir including you yes sir come no but there are Can six people now? yes but there's no job for yes, them sir. can we agree that god will give them a job yes sir and you too yes. let's pray come hold my hands father in the name of jesus christ there is an anointing that is coming upon you eh? and is for the sake of your family in the name that is above all names i release this grace upon you 
and I pray let the embargo of joblessness be broken now even on both of you I use you as a point of contact to pray now something is leaving this lady's hand you something is leaving your hand I cost that yoke now in the name of Jesus your hand is a symbol of your productivity and I declare in the name of Jesus let there be liberty liberty for all of you liberty I open the doors of jobs in Jesus name I pray why is he here you're a graduate six from where please from Abuja Abuja yes you're a school of ministry student madam let me talk to you where are you coming from natural state are you married bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit the hand of God is coming upon someone the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous please bring the person let's save time Father, I establish this victory over this lady's life. The oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever. Broken now and broken forever. Ah, we don't have time. Our time is gone. But the Lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed i'm seeing this guy carry not you now i'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in kaduna state hello kim madonna hello hello kim madonna under this grace whose name has been taken for any diabolic activity I stand by the hand of God whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service. The way God is taking us. I want to pray. Shade and doctor, please come. The Lord wants to end an old issue in your family. Please come. This is what the Lord is showing me. This thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60, 70 years. The Lord is opening my eyes to see now. Please, I want to pray for you. Those under the anointing, help them. Please, I'm just using two of you as a point of contact. But I'm seeing a spirit. This is an ancient spirit. The way this thing works is that men rise. The moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing, they must die. This is the spirit I'm seeing. Please listen. 
I'm not, I'm just using them and I'm ministering the way God is showing me. These are not the only families with this thing, but the Lord is saying I should deal with it now. Provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle, you no death will touch you. But the moment you touch that bar, you are going down. And the Lord wants to destroy it because God is using both of you to start a new program in the family. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. Bring that little girl, as small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of her family. As small as you are seeing this, this little girl. Because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family. And as small as she is, the devil wants to kill her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I use this, my dear daughter, as a point of contact. That everything that is not the planting of God, I scatter it now in the name of Jesus. May God use this, our precious daughter. And truly may she be the deliverer of her family. In the name of Jesus. A lady is going to start running because I'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family. And that spirit is going to start driving her to run away. So I'm telling you in advance, you are going to see the person stand up to start running away. It's, it's not even this lady I'm talking about. This is somebody in the crowd. You will not even you will not be in control of yourself. It's a spirit because I'm about to rebuke it right now. Mm. Father, I thank you for the Bonire family and by extension the various families. The altar that sits upon this family. Even the lawful captives came Marato Zakata shall be delivered even the lawful captives i break that yoke now i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood that ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family be broken i open up the door of increase rise to the senate of your profession i forbid the spirit of death once and for all In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, an issue that is age long. Let me tell you this a mighty deliverance has happened to this family. This thing I'm telling you fought their grandparents, fought their parents, and if not delivered now, will still fight them. If there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family, you rise to a position and crash down. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, let fire land upon such individuals and scatter that altar, scatter that altar forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. It took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble. Now I declare to you, a new order starts in your lineage. A new order starts in your family. Where children live long and they become successful. And that every embargo of witchcraft, once and for all, is broken in the name of Jesus. Madam, I can pray for you now. Where did you say you are from? Nasarawa State. Just, just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa yes, State. Where are you from? Ebony State. Ebony State. Ebony State. I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God 
is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you. Yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where's your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up, stand up. Please stand up, stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus, yes, sir. You are from campus, yes, here. sir. What do you do? I am lecturer in the university. You are a lecturer. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man, you, but there you are intelligent. I don't know you, all, you but sir. you are a brilliant man. It you, even sir. took grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, it's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, you were too exceptional. Yes, and you are supposed to be abroad now. Yes, I don't know what has kept yes, you down. Sir. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be here, yes, sir. Yes, but sir. somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about that you carry a man's destiny see let me say it i'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of jesus whatever belongs to you and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men it must be released this night it must be released this night sir please stand up what's your department Political science, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. You will know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. What do you do, my dear? I'm not doing anything. You are not doing anything. No, sir. I have to pray for you. Yes, sir. Huh? That trip abroad, you must go. Amen. Amen. Because there is an honor and there is a professor that God has destined that you will meet. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I release you and I release your destiny. Amen. Both for you and your wife. Amen. I decree and declare. Scale new heights in your profession. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. There is a friend in your life. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to be careful. There is a friend in your life. Be careful. I won't say more than that. Be careful. What God has joined, let no man put asunder. I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Bokos. Huh? Bokos. From Joss. Not state of origin where you came from, that you left it and came. Huh? I want to pray for you. What do you do? I, I, I'm a secretary. You are what? I'm a secretary. You are a secretary? Yes, sir. Come, let me pray for you. I, One of these days, we'll just trust God and do a night vigil, honestly, so that we can deal with this issue seriously. You may think that time is being wasted until you see what God is turning around in your life. All these people came from Joss? Madam, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will not have what they call that pregnancy, that they'll have to do, um, no, bridge is bridge or something like that. This is what I'm saying. All done. Let me pray for you. Come. You are sick. It looks like pregnancy. Like it's breached. This is what I'm saying. The pregnancy that looks like it's... That will open you up and carry something out. Where are you coming from? Joss. What did they say is wrong with you? Um, multiple fibrosis. No. A man... Don't feel embarrassed. Can I talk to you? A man used to come in a dream. Huh? Yes. And sleep with you. Yes, Is that true? Yes. That's what brought this pregnancy. I'm a man of God. Don't be af afraid. You, you heard the story I told you now. Yes, sir. Madam, if I'm lying, look at me before the whole world and say I'm a liar. That you go to bed and a man comes and all of a sudden this started coming. Of course, medically you would think that, okay, you check it. There is nothing there. Yet the pregnancy will not go. How long has this thing been? 
Three years. Three years. Don't cry. Don't cry. Who did you come with? May this place remain a place of solutions. Was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically and had strange... Go and listen to my teaching. The mystery of the serpent and the woman. My sister, can I pray for you? You believe in Jesus. Look at this adorable lady. Look at... Imagine a woman carrying this for three years. Is that pregnancy? Does a human being stay three years in the stomach? Are you married? Of course, imagine what this, this means to her marital life. Put your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at this. Look at what is happening to the woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by God, let it be uprooted in this body. Is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father, it must be uprooted. I uproot this right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot this right now. In the name of Jesus. By a strange mystery, may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just keep her down there. Madam, let me pray for you. What do you want the Lord to do for you? I'm believing him for a life partner. Life partner. Do you believe God can give you a life partner? Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. You are born again. Father, the Bible says, male and female, he created them. She's not embarrassed. She's standing sincerely and telling you that I came so that God will bless me with a life partner. I lay my hands upon you and I decree and declare May God bring a responsible man to your life. Amen. You will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it so. And for all these people standing, I pray for them. May the Lord himself bring miracles over their life. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. I may not have time to minister to all of you one by one. Please forgive me. Huh? Coincidentally, I'm going to just tomorrow. I'll be in just Saturday, Sunday. I'm ministering in a conference. I'm excited. I'll be in House on the Rock at Rayfield. Saturday and Sunday. I'm in just... But let me pray for you. All of you who came all the way. My dear, look at me. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. With all your heart? Yes, sir. I drive the boy that the devil wants to bring to your life say amen amen you you may not understand what i'm saying but let me repeat myself i drive i didn't say god drove him in the name of jesus christ as one who loves you well eh? i drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life amen in the name of jesus i'm amen. not looking down it is god's will that all men be saved but then I'm telling you that in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that would destroy your destiny, let it be far from you. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. For all of you, I may not know why you came, but let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name, just believe what I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. God bless you. Please go back to your seat, my God. Can we still pray for the sick? How many of you are trusting God for healing? Let me see your hands out right there. Okay, this is what is going to happen. It's okay. I'm, I'm going to pray for you. you. You came, you brought them. Okay, I'm going to pray for you now. You just relax. 
Now, please, because of time, those under the anointing, just leave them if there's no... Usher, hold on. A lady usher, place your hand on that girl. Any lady usher. Release her now. Out! In the name of Jesus. Let it come to an end now and forever. Release her destiny. Release her family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be restoration. Let there be testimonies. Please, this is how we are going to do it. Because our time is already gone. We are going to do three things at the same time. Please listen. Number one, you are going to be submitting your prayer requests. Number two, those who are trusting God for healing in the various overflows. Please, aside from those that I prayed for, for barrenness, if your reason of coming here is barrenness, whether you are in overflow one, two, or three, I want you to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you myself. Aside from that, please, you are trusting God for a healing miracle. I want you to move to your various overflows. So those at overflow one, move to the front of your projector stand. Overflow two, the same thing. Overflow three, the same thing. Those by the roadside, the roadside down to second equa, join overflow two. You can join overflow two, please. Usher's protocol PR department, coordinate yourself to help them, please. So that the people know what they are doing. Praise the Lord. Those in here, you can come. You can come. The Lord bless you. Now, there are going to be men and women of God scattered across these various places. who are ministering under a corporate anointing. Make sure you are standing for healing, please. Make sure you are standing for healing. No, no, no. Those for fruit of the womb, come in, please. The main auditorium. I want to lay hands on you by myself. It doesn't matter what overflow you are. If it is fruit of the womb, please come. The main auditorium. I want to pray for you. Now, please listen. Just a touch is enough. You don't have to start explaining and telling the men of God this is a problem. Sometimes God can give them words. If they don't, don't worry. Just a touch and you will go back. I want you to believe this. That's why you came. Are we together? While that is happening, if you have your prayer request here, you can just wave it and pass it. Let there be an usher. Okay, um, peace is here. You can pass it. Let there be an usher or somebody. Please, um, the various departments, coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this. Let's make it fast. Those online, um, you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests. And we're going to pray on it right now. Please, quickly, quickly. A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. A Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. Um, Pastor Alpha and Benga will go to overflow three. Overflow three. Pastor Femi and Kenny. And Ima go to overflow two. Also extend to those by the roadside. Extend to those by the roadside. Did you get? Let me pray for you, Pastor Lawrence. Come. I will pray for you, and then you will join those at overflow three. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the anointing, let the grace of the Spirit come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, worship team, you give us songs of the Spirit while we are ministering. And as soon as hands are laid on you, you can go back rejoicing. Those who are seated, don't be careless, be praying in the Spirit. Because God is solving people's problems while you gather the prayer requests. If you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and there will be someone to reach you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. 
in the name of Jesus do a quick walk in the life of your people in the name of Jesus hallelujah someone will fall under the anointing here once that happens the power of God will start move to heal right here those in front here okay so I can start praying now in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus Christ be healed praise the Lord please everyone stand say after me in the name of Jesus whether you are inside or outside say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now lift up your voice and begin to pray please begin to pray name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here that by the grace of God this will be the last time you have to visit this issue please pray please pray our time is gone but let's make use of the time stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God every request that I've written here by the God of heaven let this be the last time may the Lord arise and solve impossible situations arise in the name of Jesus are you praying father that these Egyptians that I see today I see them no more forever the requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms we declare intervention we declare breakthrough we declare increase hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ we declare and we agree as a family of faith that this request will turn into testimonies in your life 
we declare that these requests turn into supernatural testimonies the same way i am standing upon them i decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of jesus christ i know that they are still praying for a few people but let me just pray the final prophetic blessing on you because our time is gone it says the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night i decree and declare every economic hardship that is bringing the saints to their knees and causing them to compromise i declare that you are exempted from it now every prayerlessness represented in this place that the grace to pray seems to have gone down in the name of jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you I severe you from them right now in Jesus name I speak favor over your life and I declare in the name of Jesus walk in favor 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 Therefore, God has exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. He says that at the mention of that name, every knee must bow. I declare, whatever must bow in your life from tonight, let it bow right now. Let me pray for you finally, and especially for those of us who are not within this city if you traveled far and came i'm praying for you now in the name that is above all names to all our visitors and all those who connect with us from far that includes those from our social media platforms i decree and declare whatever the issue of concern is that brought you here return with the answers now return with the answers now you will not need to tell people you came here there will be the radiance and the glory of the spirit upon your life i declare that every door that has refused to open even as the lord kept revealing here i enforce it and we call that door open now The new month is the fourth month of the year. The number four stands for balance. That means that whatever is left that must be shown in your life, you are blessed here but not yet blessed here. You are blessed here but not yet blessed here. I declare completion for you now. May April bring you completion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.